Right, well, I'll start by asking, uh, how did you come to be involved in this particular pro particular project? Um, well, you get a phone call, and uh, someone asks you if you, you know, uh, would like to take part in a film called Noah. And you go, what do you mean, Noah, with the two animals going in two by two into the ark and all? And he says, yeah, so you have a little laugh, and then they say, who's playing Noah? And it's Russell Crowe, and you have a laugh, and then they say, I'm playing two ball cane, and I really laughed. And then they said it was at Darren Aronofsky, and you kind of stop laughing. And you can't, because I know his films, and I know he makes intelligent films, beautiful films. And so you get interested, and then you read the script. But to be honest with you, I said yes before I even read the script, which is unusual. Because I, I knew all about Darren from Mickey Rourke. Uh, he was telling me all about him a couple of years earlier, and the way he works and that. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Because, I mean, you, you've done your fair share of kind of big, epic-scale productions, but w was it any different working in that sort of environment but with Darren Aronofsky? Cause it's, it's, it's a good question because we're making an epic film, but you still had the feeling, you know, when you got down to the nitty-gritty of playing the, the characters and, and working in such a way, it was kind of like an indie film still in that way. So you, never, you, you weren't daunted by the scale of the movie and what it was going to be. So in that way, it was, you know, because I, I guess the big blockbuster movies sometimes are... Quite weak on the script, or you know, it's car chases and, and not too much intelligence going on. This was, this was a different film. This was kind of like making an indie film, but with epic proportions, you know. And it must be great when you see the kind of finished product, because when you shoot a film like mm. this, which has got so much kind of use of, I mean, there's obviously CGI, special effects, and stuff like that going on. Yeah. That when you see it, it must be almost like seeing it well for the first time it's like the first time you've ever really seen how it's all been put together well I guess so but we, we did have I mean much much of it was there the art was there the interior and the exterior um, the camps were built you know you, so you had all that to go with yeah with the with the uh, angels the rock angels uh, we, we had like poles with balls on and all that kind of stuff but that's nothing different than I've worked before but the CGI was done quite sparingly I mean it was only used when you it was necessary to use it and I think he's blended that into a a movie very well because sometimes it's so perfect that it looks wrong, mm. you know. And I think he's used it brilliantly, Darren, with the help of the people that know, of course, you know. And obviously, given the nature of the project, there's a lot of water, not a scene shot with water. Yeah. If, if I'm in the bar for too long, I get really wrinkly hands, it's Do quite you? uncomfortable. And yeah. my toes as well. Just your hands? Just my hands and toes, yeah, okay. that's it. And uh, I was just wondering, did you, was it a bit uncomfortable shooting that much in water, like starting cut and then having yeah, to. Of course, it, you know, you're doing night shoots and it's. You've got water pouring on you for four hours. It's, you know, you're not in the best of moods. <laughs> but you're, you're lucky enough that you can drive home early in the morning or get driven home when you get into a hot bath and drink a drop of whiskey and you feel all right. You start smiling because you've had a, a good day at work, yeah. you know? And was it, it must have been quite a really a fun role to get your head around because he's so kind of villainous, but he's got, there's something to him as well. It's not just your out and out. Yeah, well, that's, that's the beauty of working with Darren because... You, What's on the page ain't necessarily what, what you're going to do, you know, I mean, on the page he's a villain, but, you know, I felt, and I was talking it through with Darren, that there was more than a man. I saw him more of, kind of like Noah, you know, kind of being the, uh, I don't know, split personality in a way, the two of them, and uh, it's, a, it's a man whose father doesn't speak to him anymore, you know, the creator. The kings in those days thought they were from the gods anyway, so when Dad stops talking to you, you know, the kid, it's going to push him to the dark side a little bit, I think, you know. So we, we you know, we messed about with that and uh, and uh, I thought about some other ideas. It was great just bringing that stuff to the table and there was a lot more that I brought, but, um, you know, <laughs> probably a little bit way over. And so, um, you know, by the time you cut it all back, you, you find yourself the character and it was, uh, there had something to offer to the story and the film, you know. I think I saw him as... Humanity, he was humanity, what we are, and the good and the bad, but maybe that's, you know, because we agree, I agreed with a lot of what he was saying, but, but when you stand back and look at it, you think, well, that's maybe our problem, that's what we are. And I, I read that uh, you elbowed Russell Crowe in the ribs in, in one scene. I don't know where everyone's re read this. Um, yeah, we got some knocks, and yeah. it was unimportant, really, you know, we had... Working with Russell was fantastic, you know, standing next to him, you know you're in safe hands, you know. Yeah. Uh, so next up you've got Lords of London, which I'm uh, looking forward to. Lords of London was a film made by a mate of mine, yeah, I made yeah. it for about ten minutes, I think. I <laughs> went in and done him a favour and he's made a, a beautiful little film about um, about his, uh, a guy growing up and thinking about his father, yeah. It must be great for you to move between big blockbusters and the more independent Absolutely, films, yeah. yeah.
absolutely. Um, that's that's what it is, you know. And uh, sometimes you find the most interesting roles in the smaller movies, but then again, you, then you work on a film like this, which is a major, major film blockbuster with a great script and great directors and great actors that you feel the same about. And this is one of them. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, much appreciated.